Hey there, this is Tim, Corporate Guide with Northwest Registered Agent. Hope you guys are all having a great day out there. Uh, today we're gonna be going over how to open a business while you're still in the military. Some of the advantages that you have to doing so, as well as some of the obstacles that are gonna come down your path when you go down that road. Uh, of course, starting a business is always gonna bring in extra income. Uh, it's gonna help create a smooth transition for you into your civilian life, as well as you are going to be eligible for some small business grants, some low interest and even no interest loans to get the business off the ground. And these, some of these states are going to be willing to waive their formation filing fees uh, just for you being a part of the active military and or a veteran coming out as a thank you. Um, of course, there's going to be some obstacles as well. Uh, number one, the military does have a code of ethics and regulations that you are going to want to make sure to adhere by. This means that you cannot use any US government logo on any advertisement for personal financial gain, nor can you even wear your military uniform when, when doing a sales pitch meeting or any other advertising. Uh, anything that is going to make it to where it implies that the US government is backing your business, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to not do so um, because it could cause conflicts of interest there. Um, and of course, while you're in the military, uh, it is the number one priority to make that your first call of duty in anything that you do. Whether you are active full-time or you are a part-timer in the Army National Guard or the reserves, you are still on call at all times for the government and they wanna make sure that that is your full-time priority while you're fulfilling your commitment to them. What some people choose to do is they get a business partner that's gonna be outside of the military that can kind of help run things for them while they're still inside and waiting for them to transition to civilian life. Um, or some people just know simply the scale of their business and what they're really trying to do. They start out small while they're in, knowing that as soon as they can fully commit to their business when they transition out, uh, that they can always scale up to being the business that they're gonna wanna be. And many people struggle with the question of simply no, wanting to know, where do I start my business? Am I doing it in the right state? Am I doing all the right steps? Uh, all of this can be answered with just knowing what type of business you're wanting to do and where and how you're wanting to do that. If you're wanting to be a sole proprietorship, all that simply needs to be done is making sure that you have all of your business licenses and permits for the state and the local municipalities where you're wanting to do your business. If you are wanting to be an LLC, forming your LLC is done by filing the articles of organization with your secretary of state, making sure to appoint a registered agent that's gonna be there to accept all legal state documents and any service or process on behalf of your business. And a lot of these registered agents can even help you with your formation by filing your paperwork to the state too. Um, very important to understand that if you are looking to do business outside of your home domestic state that you first registered in, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to be registered in each additional state. This is what's called a foreign registration. This is done by filing very similar paperwork as you did when you originally formed your company, the articles of organization, the secretary of state, and of course, appointing a registered agent to be able to receive all those documents in that state as well. Um, hopefully this gets a lot of your questions answered and at least gets you moving down the right path to be able to make that educated decision that's best for you and your company. Um, check out part two of the video. It's gonna go into a lot more specifics on the states that give you the biggest advantages of being both an active and non-active military member and what exactly those advantages are. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe for more, and we'll see you soon.